Okay. okay, I guess we're officially in, in order here. Well, let's. I second that. We're in order. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. I am. Happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Yeah. Mr. St. Patrick was a <coughs> was a a young boy who was English, and he was kidnapped. Yes, he was. Well, it's a fascinating story. Yeah. By Irish pirates mm -hmm. and hauled to Ireland, and he was, and basically he did kind of like what David did. He was a shepherd in uh, Ireland as a slave. I guess he was a slave, but he was utilized as a shepherd. And while he was being a shepherd in the, in the, in the, on the Emerald Isle, he, uh, he. Um, developed his relationship with God and then he escaped and got back to England to his family and he became a, a pastor or, or a saint yeah, or, well, it, he became fascinating a, a clergyman yeah. and he had a calling to go back to Ireland and and uh, and save all those people I think that's fascinating I just thought that was fascinating I learned something today about St. Patrick's Day well, I thought that was pretty good. It ain't about no, no. It any, anybody. And the shamrock is is used to, to yeah. in reference to him because he used the shamrock to teach about the Trinity. Yeah. Because it has three leaves. I think that's pretty cool. And that's all we're going to talk about on that particular issue. <laughs> I don't know what I got here. Those are. What have I got here? This is something we haven't been doing, but we should do, which is get a copy of the accepted minutes as well as a copy of the ones we're looking at. Oh. You know what I'm saying? That's, the, you know, and uh, obviously. Okay. What thou deemest to do with them. <laughs> Those are notes, but the, the minutes are the other ones. Mm -hmm. I, I, I refuse to put, the, put them down as minutes if we don't have a quorum. I don't refuse, I just nobody's told me to I do otherwise. Um, I've I've done minutes for other, other agencies and government sub-agencies, and if you get together, you're supposed to have notes in the minutes, but whether or not they're official, it's, you know, if you don't have a quorum, uh, are the minutes official or not, you know? Anything that you do, I suppose, you know, you've got to have a record of. What, what, what else is new? Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, but, but, you know, people don't keep them all. Oh, yeah, I can give you that. Yeah, yeah, there's a date in the town records on that. Is that the school? Yeah. Okay. It's been moved from where it was by about seven, by about ten feet. It was moved downhill. It was closer to the road, and so in back in my memory, it was moved downhill. And um, it does, does, it's interesting. But no, um, there's actually a floor plan for that that was accepted. So we not only have the date, but we also have the plan. The construction materials and everything was on that one. But um, but that's in, I can't tell you. I know we bought the property off Sewell Prescott, so it was part of, uh, so I can tell you the date when it was bought, and then I can tell you the, when the town record accepted it. But no, that's well known. So that's uh, last last week's last month's okay. to look over. <laughs> I got to do better than that. I trust my memory too much. 
those are by memory as much as you know I make notes the day after but I really should sit right down and do them yeah. well, it's, it's hard to get you you know if you're somebody that always could remember everything it's hard to <laughs> I, well, I have that problem too I don't write down anything and then I don't remember anything yeah well because I always used to remember my memory. memory is good and, and um, I usually trust it but It's still not. It's still a good idea to do it immediately. I've been staring at a computer so much today. I can't see nothing. Just pure fuzz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, just it's ridiculous. Put glasses on. I can't see. Take them off. I can't see. Well, I make a motion we accept the minutes. I don't see anything wrong. Do you see anything wrong with them? No. Nope. Yeah, I'll, I'll second it again. I guess. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think there's any anything that says you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they're my minutes, so I shan't probably. But that only is any reason why you can't. <laughs> well, okay. we'd have to have somebody that just was a substitute. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's. I don't know what the rules are about chairmen's and and war and and, and and motions. You know. <clears throat> but I had I had great hopes for this month, and I thought I failed. But um. Yeah, I'm sure, the weather didn't help. No, it's it's Wesley in the springtime. Do you remember the Do you remember the old show? Uh, 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 Lauren Green, you know what, Bonanza. Bonanza. Yes, Bonanza. And, and I watched that too. Hoss, yeah. Hoss used to have to take a tonic in the spring, yeah. you know, a sulfur and molasses. <laughs> and I, I've always been like that, you know. <laughs> Mother would open my throat and give me a pea fine and wine or something, you know. It was the spring of the year, I'd slow up. It's just yeah, like... It's cod liver oil. Yeah, yeah it, it's the spring of the year. I don't know whether it's just the length of the winter or what it is. Or just no, no, you're right, sir. Um, most depleted in February yeah, yeah. because people balance children do it once a month but adults balance everything over a year uh -huh. and February is when you're run down yeah. Yeah. I just I slow right up but I'm um, just gonna go out there and see if there are any dandelions under the snow right <laughs> get something get something good okay so you you accepted those well oh, that's not a pen well, I made a uh, wild blueberry cake, uh, a recipe I cut out of the Portland Press Herald, and uh, I've, I've never made a blueberry cake before, so it was my first time from scratch, and I think it's the first time that I've never had to worry about a cake, uh, uh, pushing the cake, saying, hey, somebody eat this cake before it goes bad. <laughs> I mean, it's gone, and it was a big cake, two layers, two layers, but using frozen wild blueberries, and they're good. Oh, mm -hmm. it was very good. Yeah, I got, very I good. got, I got a chicken that's enjoying those, <laughs> literally. I mean, frozen. Pick, picked her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she really go for it after those. Yeah. You know, you know what you have to do. It's there's nothing any funner than to giving an animal something that it enjoys. You know, I mean, we used to give Christmas treats to the cows, yeah. you know, and, 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 and chickens too, you know, <laughs> they, they like what they like. <laughs> we go up to the, uh, the cows and the horse are enjoying this warmer weather, that's for sure. I, they've been stuck inside all winter because with my makeshift door on the <laughs> one side of my barn, it's been hard to get them in and out because that, the horse won't go by the top. Right. It's well, like. understood. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just doesn't want to. Nope, I ain't going under that top. No, sir, you no. nuts, you crazy. I ain't going under that top. And uh, so, uh, so that's been. But the cows have definitely been enjoying it. We had a calf born February first. Nice little little bull calf, just mm -hmm. as cute as can be. But he was born outside, 
I was a pasture, so he lost part of one ear because it frostbit. Oh dear. Poor little thing. Yeah, we have but some goats like that now. Yeah, it's how, but he's healthy. You know, it 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 sloughed off healthy. It didn't infest or anything like that. So, um, and we haven't let him go out since he was born. He stays inside. Mm -hmm. Mom goes out. She just leaves him behind. <laughs> <laughs> Adaptable, aren't they? <laughs> she stands out there at the fence and bellows all day because uh -huh. her calf's in the, in the barn. Yeah. And he just lays there curled up. We offer him grain and uh, hay. He does pretty good. But it's pretty interesting how animals adapt like that. They're pretty, they're pretty good. Okay, let's so, see. I know we got to stick to our agenda, right? Sorry. I did. I came up and I... Uh, you know, put in for money with Michelle. Yep. And um, and it seemed like it was okay. She she said she was going to add some, but uh, Mr. Neal has apparently got them to add even more. So. What's that? Uh, what the, was it that you got them to add? For the cemeteries and yeah, what? Yeah. yeah I, I should, Wesley wasn't here when you were telling him how telling us how much. I should have made a copy of that email that I sent up and. Also get a response back from the treasurer too. Uh -huh. The uh, so how much did the selectmen say they were going to add twenty uh, uh, fifteen hundred no, to bring no, it up to a total of twenty five hundred? No, t uh, wait, I got it here. Yeah. The uh, oh, where is it? Okay, the. Uh, You're going to have a total of twenty-seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's to be voted on at town meeting. Yeah. I made a list of all the what all the other towns around, how much they've been in turn, how much they've you know put in the, for the town meeting. And some of them are up on seventy-five hundred dollars, but you know generally are thirty-five hundred, forty-five hundred, and whatnot. So. I think I was recommending like at least twenty five hundred. Yeah. So they put two thousand just to uh, maintaining the, the cemeteries, and then they give you an extra money for the flags. Right. So. The um. And then we get we have to kind of decide what to do about where what we're gonna where we're gonna which cemetery we're gonna spend it on. I want that stone for Merrill replaced up in the Acton Corner Cemetery and we mm -hmm. may have to pay a, something for that. Oh, for which one? And, and that Civil War veteran. And then uh, Morrill or whatever his name is. I can't Samuel. It's Willie. Willie, that's it. Mm -hmm. I knew I had the wrong name. Yeah. I'm going by memory, so my memory isn't like Wes's. <laughs> and and um, I st uh, we still need to get the trees removed from the na the the nascent cemetery that's in the yeah, middle of Hutchins. the field. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the Sambin Cemetery. I guess. Right? Luther's is down, isn't it? Isn't it Luther's buried? And I think he's a he's a vet, so we might have to lift that one. There was one of them, Luther Gardings, was. We have to look into Which that. cemetery? In the uh, in, in, cemetery? No, in the bracket. In the in field. The bracket, yeah. bracket I'm sorry, yeah, you... Nason Bracket Cemetery. Because there's two bracket cemeteries, right? Right. Well, actually, there's more than two. Cause <laughs> but it... Um, there was two of those Luther Goddings, father and nephew, or father and son. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know if I put two flags out there. No, I think no, I only I, put one. Well, and that stone is standing. The one I, well, I think it is. Well, there's a Nathaniel bracket that's there, and then there's, I think there's, I think there's two bets in there. But I know Nathaniel was a vet. Yeah. You know. Uh, and then, and then we need to. I do can't something say where the was. The, was the, we need to do something with the. Well, we have. We need to, we need to do something with all of them, but you know, there's the Gilman <laughs> Cemetery, which. You know, we have a living yeah, heir, and he's back from him at all. I haven't con communicated with him. I, and that's on me. I'm. Uh, I haven't communicated yeah. with him. 
Yeah, I, uh, I, he sort of, I haven't heard from him for quite a while. Yeah, I haven't heard from him. He sent me a copy of um, Nathan Goodwin's stuff. Yeah. That was nice, you know. You know, just because that was Nathan. I don't know if you know Nathan Goodwin, but he wrote um, notes on early acting history. So, yeah, I, I oh, that little it. that little book. Or it's it. I don't know if it's a book or what. You know, Roby had it too. Okay, <coughs> so she probably won't be able to put her hand on it. Yeah, Roby but. had it too. But uh, but it was it was good ones. And, um, yeah. And it's, it's a bunch of, I incorporated what was in there. I looked at it quite a while back. I should look at it again because your memory, your mind keeps finding things. You know, you, yeah. you keep finding things as you go along and and if you don't make notes, you're, you're sorry. But, the, but that, that's, that's on that. I have not looked at the cemetery listing. I apologize for that. I got uh, busy with uh, family stuff, so. Um, dealing with some family stuff and um, so I haven't I haven't looked at the um, at the, the the list my idea was to, to I can I, my printer I can copy and print so I was going to copy it and print it mm -hmm. and then um, and then handle it from there yeah, that's this thing else. here about the, the cemeteries I'm supposed to fill this out and I have not done it mm -hmm. So, if it's late, too bad. Sorry. So, I'll try to do to get that done before the next meeting. The um, do we have to go before? Do we have to go to the to the? Um, the warrant finance meeting when they when they have our stuff to explain why we want what we want was beyond Saturday the 28th the 28th of March is when they're, they're having it on a Saturday the warrant finance meeting so oh, the selectmen are having budget meetings with everybody yeah they'll give you 15 minutes to Saturday the 28th. I believe what so. What time? Uh, what, why isn't the the why isn't the the warrant and finance committee dealing with this? Well, we. Or is this part be, of the process? They'll, they'll, they'll be with them. Yeah. They'll be with it's, them. It's, it's been like so. that quite a while, hasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. This is something new that totally new? They started a yeah. couple of years ago, I guess. And yeah. Yeah, I thought I went to one of them. Like nobody has anything to do on the 28th. <laughs> I have to look at my work schedule. I might have to be I might be working that day I don't have that with me what time didn't didn't, didn't you get that uh, schedule no they no. don't give us anything <laughs> come on <laughs> no I, I look in the mailbox out there now I, <laughs> I, I, I wish I'd have brought my other folder right? I mean I, I found something in there a few months ago I was the first time in about two years I, I don't remember what it was where did they post the, the, the <laughs> special town meeting that they're having Thursday night I heard they were having a special town meeting Thursday night so where'd they post it there's no sign out front <laughs> well where'd they post it what at the dump probably uh, at the post office I guess the post office and the dump yeah they got a, they got a little they do it at two places I think yeah. They didn't even ask the, the Warren Finance Committee. So unless you go to the post office, you're not going to see it. And if you don't go to the dump, you're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. They didn't even ask the Warren and Finance Committee? No, we didn't. I think I've used they the acting post office four times in the last 20 years. <laughs> well, I'm still trying to figure out. I asked a few more the person that now, told me really. what it was about, and they said it was about the roads. And I said, well winter maintenance that you're automatically supposed to be able to spend the money for winter maintenance oh no we still have to vote on it I said no that's not why it was set up that way it was set up that way so that you could plow the roads <laughs> and sand the roads and make them safe in the winter even if you ran out of money in your budget without having a special town meeting because but they're only allowed 15 percent 
and it's something like 27 percent of them. So they went over the 15 yeah. percent. Well, I knew there was a percent. But are, are we? But usually in the years past, we used to turn around and, you know, take care of it at the annual meeting. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are we going to be eligible for for being a disaster? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. We're getting supposedly. I think we're getting big bucks uh, with the big snowstorm. Right. That's what I mean. I was just wondering whether it would, that would cover it. What they want all of them. Yeah. So that town meeting is this this week, you know. Yeah, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> I think they should have our town meeting. Town meeting in March. Our, the schools no longer. We changed it to spring because of the schools physical year well the school no longer is with us there they have a separate town meeting and so we need to put it back to our physical year because we get better attendance in March than we do in June uh, I because I won't be there if it falls on my husband's birthday or on or if it's um, or if there's other major events going on and come on 40 people to right. decide the budget of the town yeah, last year was what, 32 or 35? Yeah. Less than 35. I think they should have to have at least at least a certain percentage of the town people there to be able to hold it. That's my feeling. No, we'd never have one, I guess. Huh? We'd never get, have one, I guess. Well, I, I, think, I think you could have a, a good town meeting. This hall used to be packed. Mm -hmm. 35 people won't even pack yeah. this. I try to get it moved up to, you know, either April, same time as the school. We, we could have had it the same time as the schools. It's not a good time of year. June is not a good time of year. No. People get married. People are graduating. Yeah. There are uh, Family stuff. Yeah, but we, weddings. Yeah, and but the reason why we did that when I was selectman is because the school could not get their budget together before the end of May. And but I, but and now, I now, now that. it's all done. It's already done, you know. I realize that, but it's it's now it's separate. It has to be. It's done before us. Okay. It's it, they are, they have their meeting before us, and they have the town meeting for the school at night, which I hate. They should have it on a Saturday. I'm serious. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They have it on a school night on top of it. I have. I have one meeting to go to a month. That's this one. And, I, <laughs> and I'm eating my supper on my way up here. <laughs> <coughs> nope, that's what we were doing out there. I got a 10-year-old at home wants me helping <laughs> with his homework. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, that's what I was telling him. That's why we were sitting out there. You, you and I were finishing eating before we came in. <laughs> Oh. Nope. Well, oh, the only thing I'll just to clarify on on the cemeteries, I I would like to see if we can get together and find the Poppet Cemetery on the town farm, if it's possible. You know, yeah. If we could get up in there. And um. I don't know where it is. I wish I did, but I don't. And I. I also think the Watson one by yours would be a good thing to, to really work on in terms of a Revolutionary War soldier. Yeah. It really would be nice to have something along those lines. It might generate a little bit of positive feeling back. And even if we had asked Mr. Revod to help us or something, you know, that's a possibility. Yeah. Mm, you know, because it's, it's a nice ceremony. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, there's a stone there, but it's just, just recognition. I think that's a good one. Yeah. It's not. There's not much there, but we could, we could clean that up a little bit. I mean, it looks like somebody just well, pushed it in. I mean, it doesn't. It really doesn't look like a cemetery. You know, uh, there, there's no real the, defined the, boundaries. Well, but it's got the stone. The, the, the walls stone are there. Wall oh, absolutely. It's, it's just, just all the trees cut on the inside just, of it. it just, it's just. It's a very small stone wall. <laughs> the. Uh, it's, it's a small. You know, it's from only about 16 feet square. I mean, it's yeah, very it's small. Yeah, it's not very big. The Acton Chapley Historical Society cleaned up three cemeteries last summer. Yeah, yeah. 
don't. So I, I suppose that's the pitch that you'd make to to the select people is the fact that you wanted you really want to do the Civil War soldier grave. Yeah, the stone. It just it just needs a new stone. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and we may not be able to get it for free. No, nope. you might not. And, and um, that's all right. Can't we can't? And then the. Um, and and we were going to have it repaired until the part that broke off got lost. Got dis got, got lost. Got lost. Disappeared. <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> got hit twice. Oh well. I know because I had I had Stephen Roy all set to come up, but it was very discouraging. That was very discouraging. So you've got the particulars on it? We've got the particulars on it. We've got the particulars on it. On the, I've got it all written down. Yeah, yeah. What was mm. on the stone. Right. Okay. Poster contest? Poster contest, yes. I, I didn't contact the school either. Mm. I didn't do anything I was supposed mm. to do. You can fire me. But no, slaves no, 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 because no, you got it. And you probably it. wouldn't get much for me. I'm lame. <laughs> Well, we had you did the next one. You got that. You got yeah. We yeah. You talked to I did, Richard. Yes, I did. You're right. I did one of the things I was supposed to do this past. But we hadn't month. we hadn't really bounced the other out, anyways. But uh, you know. Uh, um, I, I I have the, the poster material. So as far as the poster. You want to you want to try to iron down a topic for it? Well, we talked about the big trees, and uh, I we thought talked, that was a yeah, good one. The big trees, uh, you know. Yeah. 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 I think that, that that's a fine one. I need to talk. I just need to talk to the school. I don't know. I was going to put. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to leave posters in the town hall because it's really not a place to put them. Mm -hmm. But maybe in the library. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's close enough to the town hall, and they'll point. have a better way to display the the the, the sheet and the and the uh, yeah. you know, and they can plug it to the any kids that come in to visit the library. So, um, do you want to work on the language for the theme? It would be nice to get it, get it made. I know. Uh, you know, we I did. Think it would we, be nice to get it to the school before yeah. April vacation. Yeah. That way, the kids can can maybe work on it for April over April vacation. So the, the general description would be to make a poster about the free, your favorite lodge tree, or your favorite spot. Yeah, or, or your favorite will. spot was what you know. I, I stuck it down there because it made sense. You know, your favorite spot in Acton. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't want it, so that was a double option. You know. Well, but. you you might want to specify um, favorite spot outside because <laughs> their favorite spot might be in front of a computer screen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> or, or a TV set. <laughs> you want to say outdoor location, or outdoor site, outdoor yeah. feature. Sure. Out, it can be a feature. It can be. It can be a it favorite can, outdoor. I don't want to use site, but but you know. Okay. You can work on that. Location, I guess. You know, so then, you know, somebody might just say it's a pond, or somebody might say it's a, it's a large rock. You know. <laughs> that used to be my favorite. My favorite. I had a couple of favorite spots, but one of them was a rock. Yeah. Yeah. I used to find it, and I, just, I could. It was just the right right size it was big enough that you could get up off the ground and it was and you could sit or you could yeah. lay back yeah. on it mm -hmm. and and it was in just the right spot in the woods where the sun came through the trees and hit it at the, just yeah. the right time of day uh, johnny hobbs's mother gave him a piece of parcel down on the other side of my mother's and um 50 acre lot 
it used to be the Mudget property. Well, it was, it was Mudget at one time. Then it came into the last case, but eventually it was Hobbs's. And uh, there was a pair of rocks that was like you cleft them, and it was probably 50 feet between them. And it was just, they, they looked like it was a big, big rock and just split. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a beautiful deer run down in between. Oh, and, yeah. and, and John, John, he says, you know, one day he says, my favorite spot, my favorite spot around here is Big Ben, Little Ben. <laughs> I said, I know what you mean. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about a pair of rocks. And he says, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so, so uh, that's, that's, that's the kind of thinking, you know, um, coming out of the bog, going back toward the Salmon Falls, toward the Free Ponds, there's that valley. You know, if you if you know where the brook crosses the Edgecombe Road, you yeah. take take that brook and go down. Before you get to the free ponds, it's like a valley. This time of year, it'll be just ice will be going down on both sides of it. Yeah. It's beautiful down in there, and there's mass. You know, I don't, I don't know if they've cut the trees. They, for years, there was some pretty good sized pine in there, but um, it's just a pretty pretty spot. It's a pretty spot. You know, there's there's a there's one to the right of the Hebo Hybo Road. Mm -hmm. If you going from the Mil Mills Road on your right down in there probably half a mile. There's some beautiful stone up in there. And you know, it's, it's at Acton Stock. It's a very a very um, heavy mineral colored stone. It's the same stuff as you see um, <coughs> at the foot of, where is it? I think it's at the, this side of the, uh, this side of what used to be the apple shed before you get to the corner. There's an outcrop right there. Pretty, pretty stock, pretty, yeah. uh, pretty stone. But it's just, it's the same same stuff. It, it crops up in about four different places in Acton. It's called the Acton Stock on yeah. on geology maps. It's pretty. But anyways, yeah, that's really good. So we might have to look at the wording on that a little bit, or just let Bill do it. <laughs> Come up with something. <laughs> He's a wordsmith. <laughs> yeah. But but you know. Um, I really wanted them to, th I, I would like to get the, them to thinking about large trees, you know, and what there is there for pretty ones, you know. And, um, I don't know where I saw that. I, I, the book I had last week was either Milt Mills Library or one of the libraries. It, it was nice. Yeah, it was Milt Mills Library. I think you had yeah. that from. Yeah. Okay, Swam. Okay, yeah. I've talked with Richard Nass, and he is willing to speak. He can speak in April or in June. So you could speak at our April meeting or a June meeting. I just thought that June was getting a little bit too late mm -hmm. in the summer season, and that April would work better for us, even though it's coming up and it's going to be our next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted to know what I was looking for, and I said, well, I said, we'd like you to, uh, you know, we're a conservation committee. We'd like you to tell us about what it is, you know, and we'd like you to, you can bring any visuals you want, the more the merrier. And I said, we'll advertise it, or try to advertise it, and uh, let people know that you're coming to talk about Swarm. It's the, let's see if I can remember it. <laughs> Small Woodlot, Woodlot Owners, Association. Owners Association of Maine. Maine. And Richard Nass is going to be appointed the president when they have their meeting. At the next yeah, annual meeting, I guess. He's becoming the president. So he he's um and he has managed his small woodlot so that he could cut timber to repair his barn and get siding to and, and he, but he can tell tell all mm -hmm. about yeah. that better than me. And that's that's a that's really good. They hold a lot of their meetings way up Maine, so it's kind of hard, and I don't know if any a lot of people know about it. But managing your woodlot is a conservation issue, because mm -hmm. if you manage it right, you're going to have the wildlife, plus you're not going to have, you're not going to have problems with, you know, you're not going to have to worry about widow makers or any of that kind of stuff, because you're going to get rid of the trees that are flawed or or have problems because of the weather or storms and you're going to manage it so that your trees can actually be 
uh, so that you can actually enjoy it. You can enjoy the, the wood lot and stuff. So I think this will be a good presentation because it's just like anything. Um, conservation isn't just about not, it's not, it's not just about not doing anything. Sometimes it's about managing something well. Well, it's one thing you don't see too often is a good breakdown on what there is for properties in the town. You know, what lots are out there in terms of, I mean, we're in charge of, one of the duties we have is the open space, you know, so we have a good sense of where the large lots are. But um, if somebody wanted to put a, a graph together on how many, how many lots of certain sizes, say between five acres and 10, or between five acres and 20, you know? If you own two acres, your house isn't taking up all two acres. No, no. Acton mm -hmm. is a woody place. It's got a lot of trees. Yeah. So uh, you're going to have, you have a woodlot, even if it's a, just a little tiny one. I just mm. think it, it's a, I think it would be a good thing to, to yeah. learn about. I, um, so I told him we'd maybe a half an hour into our meeting, he, we would turn it over to him. Yeah. And, uh, I, I hope that wasn't overstepping. No, no, no. But, no, no. And I told him that he could have a presentation from anywhere from a half hour to an hour if he wanted. You know, so uh, because I thought that that would pretty much kind of take up our meeting time. If we can get some people mm. to come, it would be really nice. Plus, it's at night, so they may not show up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have it on a Saturday. <laughs> no, no, no. It'll still be light at 7 o'clock by then. Uh, I know, but it's a Tuesday and it's a school night. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. So, so we, so I, de I, I actually got something accomplished. I can't say I've done any site walks. <laughs> um, concerns conservation. I, don't know, I haven't been out too much. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of deer, but I assume they're making it all right. Well, it's going to have been a tough year for It's got to have been, you know. I haven't seen any deer. I've seen tracks. I've seen tracks. I've seen, seen rabbits. seen the turkeys have been getting getting around. They seem to be all right. Yeah. Well, seen that, the deer. The, I, my path to Have you the, seen deer? That? Have you seen many deer? No. It's been a rough, rough winter for them, or... Just haven't oh, seen no, they're, out, they're out roaming around. They're out. Yeah. There's yeah. plenty of people that feed them in secret. Yeah. Somebody hit one on, uh, I don't know, just a few days ago on the road to Rochester. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of issues out there. I, I, I get a lot of emails from the other side of the stream, and uh, there's a uh, been a lot of there's been a lot of um, public concerned over tree infestations. You know, the adelgid, and there's a, I guess there's a couple. There's a moth that's coming up that seems well, to the be the worst hitting. ones. We got that emerald ash borer. Yeah, mm, yeah. The ash borer yeah. is a big concern. Do you know much about it? Um, I I know that it. It destroys trees, it kills trees, and it winters under the bark. That's why they don't want you buying firewood in New Hampshire and, and I, bringing it across state lines I, or I, hauling Maine wood to New Hampshire. I helped take two ashes out that were used for studies. You know, they, they, they kill the bark on them and then they see if, yeah. if insects get into the top. So they actually, you know, it's a study. And uh, the state, the state's gone. Has done a lot of work on it. There's been no signs of it in Maine yet, but of it course it's in New Hampshire. It's stopped at the Merrimack River so far. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't crossed the river. Yeah. It's yeah. a, it's a, I, uh, uh, you know, I've done a little bit of reading on it, but I haven't done a real lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the beetles are 
Nasty. Oh, it's, it's just another tree to go, and it's too bad. Well, it's kind of scary when you figure out how many of the trees in the state are ash trees. No, oh, I know. Well, that's... It's some huge percentage. Yeah, because we, we've lost the other ones that would mm. fit that habitat, and, you know, the the... the the beach have got their own troubles, and maples seem to be not responding too well to acidity. Mm -hmm. well, we do have some problems. Yeah, we do. And what, what was the moth one? I'm not sure. I got to go back and look at it. It was the oh, there's some sort of winter moths. Yeah, so it, it, there's the winter moth. That's the, that. That's been there. There's another one too. There's another one beside the winter moth that's been been bothering. There's something new coming up. And then there's, you know. Okay. I haven't heard about the winter moth, and I haven't heard about this new moth. Yeah, either. the winter moth, they've been doing studies on for quite a while in Maine. You know, the Forest Service has got a pretty good entomology team that's going yeah. at it. I'm trying to remember what it does. Yeah. I'm sure I can Google it, but maybe find out something about the invasive species that if I could talk to Greg, he, he'll know. That's something, that invasive species. I had somebody mention the bittersweet on the ridge because um, my land on the, on the ridge is infested with bittersweet, you know, and it is an invasive species. But I also have other invasive species. Um, I can't think of what, it was, what it's called. It's something olive. It's Automo. Oh, Automo. Automo. Yeah, it's nasty in yeah, I southern have that parts of New Hampshire. Yeah. And it, what it is is a, they're ornamental trees that people bring in to plant in their gardens. And and the problem is they have no natural enemies. No, it was actually sold by the conservation mm -hmm. districts. Yeah, for birds. As bird, good. Yeah, mass. but they're invasive and they but take over and they kill out the indigenous, the indigenous yeah. species that also provide food for the birds. Yeah. Barberry is one. They have a problem with that down at the Wells Preserve. They're they're uh, they're trying to eradicate it from the Wells Preserve because it it t it kills off the stuff that the birds that the estuary needs for the for it to be an estuary and provide what it needs for the birds that are coming in from the ocean because and and from the land because that's what an estuary estuary is. I can't say that word. So inv invasive species can be kind of interesting. Well, it's like they have that one out in the Midwest that grows up in the grassland. What is that called? And here, the cattlemen, remember? They used to have range wars back in the 1800s because a sheep herder moved in. <laughs> the sheep were going to kill the grass, right? So what now are they doing? <laughs> They're using sheep to eradicate this invasive species that kills the natural prairie grass. Mm. I think that's so funny. I just think it's so funny. <laughs> we have to learn to work with nature. <laughs> so they, they do a pretty good thing about trying to make people aware or know of the ash borer at different events that are going around. They always have handouts at the fairs all summer long yeah. and things. I don't, I, I haven't seen anything on the winter moth. I don't, maybe I just haven't looked. Show and tell, I don't have much. I, uh, I, I did get a kick out of them. Um, that's why I wanted to thank you for that. That was neat. <laughs> oh, okay. I wasn't sure you got it. <laughs> I thought I had that. I said, I don't know if I ever did thank him for that. Where is it? New Yorkshire. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. yeah. Yorkshire. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. England. <laughs> That's, that is nice. Yeah, that's, well, it's, it's, just a, it's just a slice of geology, you know, and so, it's so, those, I... There were peregrines, actually, I don't know if I said it in the card, nesting on that. Yeah. When mm -hmm. I was there. Yeah. Peregrines. Yeah, oh, peregrine falcons. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
English, do you, in, in, there, there are connections between some of the bedrocks in England yeah. and here, but more, most of our, most of the geology that we share in common is what you'd see up in the, the Hebrides, you know, up in Caledonia, up in the Highlands. But, but uh, yeah, well, a well, lot of this is sedimentary. But yeah, this is we're all you're in, basically in the Cambrian mountains yeah. at that point. Right. Um, That's wonderful. It's pretty. That must have been something to see. Yeah. You right. know, when I went to. Um, to Arizona and, and we went up we traveled from um, Phoenix up to up to see the Grand Canyon we went through S Sedonia yeah. I'm not saying it right but <laughs> no, it it's the honeymoon it's the honeymoon Mecca of the Midwest but. and it's it's it literally is just a red mm -hmm. and it, it, the roads mm -hmm. go like this <laughs> 90 degree turns and you're going up the side of these cliffs and it's it's just red everywhere oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean just so beautiful just amazingly beautiful and um, and that was just so, I, and I, all I could think of is and people take their kids to Disneyland what a waste mm. <laughs> and of course the Grand Canyon was pretty cool too that big that's a big hole that's a that's a really big hole <laughs> Well, that's really it's 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 an interesting I don't know topic to to try to look at nature from something more than an emotional view. You know, it's nice to know some science behind nature to have it to try to make a study of it. And uh, you know, in the 18th century, in the Victorian age, people like to go out and look at fossils and they look, like to look at plants and they used to like to draw and um, now you know some people are thinking of giving courses for kids to teach them how to draw because they don't they <coughs> have to live what they they see you know no, so they can't they don't you know it used to be it, that used to be a component of all biology was you had to you had to draw yeah. and, and, and not now so um, and it's got to the point where, you know, you clip and paste an image and you cl clip and paste content, but do you really understand? You don't understand formulative law, you don't understand how things are organized, but you, you clip and paste. And then you, then somebody sits in and analyzes whether or not you clipped and paste and kept the file pure, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to go back to the pictures, to go back to your photos yeah. that you were talking about. And it, it becomes a big, big issue, you know, and... It's more concerned about how you've handled it digitally than whether or not you understand the content. But, um, and I, I suppose that's a good lead-in for, for these two, you know. This this was printed and reprinted and reprinted and reprinted, and it's just black and white trees of Maine. Yeah. And I personally still prefer that to the modern version, which is colorized and nice, pretty, and, you know, it's a beautiful piece of work. I'm glad that glad the state did it. I'm glad that the state did it, but I, I still find the black and white drawing more useful. Mm -hmm. Personally, I just do. Oh yeah, I tend to oh, use the, um, <laughs> the old Petersons. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they just you know, but but these but, but these got beautiful pictures. Black oaks. Yeah, the beautiful beautiful oak. pictures. I don't have a black oak, but I've got a um, red oak. Well, I could make a pitch for Vaughn Woods because it's beautiful down there, and it's got. 40 different varieties of trees and uh, I don't know I mean even the Mary Grant how many how many varieties are up there quite a few a what trees you got quite oh, a yeah. few up there yeah, yeah. there's a lot of them. yeah I was surprised you know. <laughs> I know it, 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 there's got to be 22 or three different varieties up there yeah you know They're and amazing. Um, yeah so so uh, and, and and that's you know that's good and I don't know how much would be on that town farm property, but it would be something that would be worth playing around with, you know, yeah. to, to, to really do a study of it. To do a to, to do a study of it, and, and and literally to do a study from the ground up, do some soils, do some whatever. Yeah. But um, but it it is interesting to compare the two. <laughs> and uh, continuing with forestry for a second, have, have you read that one? I own that one. You should. Have you read it? No. I if you don't, if you don't, you oughta. 
You know, it's like he says, he owns it. You yeah. know, it's, it's really... Um, I think there's another one he's done since. Yes, he's done another one since that. And and uh, I, I can't say I've completely digested that, because I haven't. And But basically, the theme in this thing is that when we go in and utilize the landscape in one form or another, we create, we take a slice out of the timeline or the slice out of the history of the, the natural sequence of the forest. And then we're left, to, sometimes we take two slices out. So, you know, it, it, what you just got talking about the, the red rocks out yeah. there. You know, if you take slices of those out, you have to figure out what was missing. So it's discontinuities, and, and that's what this is all about, reading reading what happened yeah. from what you see. I should bring my stalag, my You know, so, so it's, an inter it's an interesting piece. My broken stalagmite from Missouri, and, and I have. Oh, can I read the poems? Can I read them, please? I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray, a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Sure. Joyce Kilmer. <laughs> and then this one, this is a good one, because a lot of people burn wood. Which wood burns best? Beech wood fires are bright and clear if the logs are kept a year. Chestnuts only good, they say, if for long it's laid away. Birch and fir logs burn too fast, blaze up bright and do not last. Elm wood burns like a churchyard mold. <laughs> Even the very flames are cold. Poplar gives a bitter smoke, fills your eyes and makes you choke. Apple wood will scent your rooms with an incense like perfume. Oak and maple, if dry and old, keep away the winter cold. But ash wood wet and ash wood dry, a king shall warm his slippers by. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's why we need to keep that Bora out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I've never heard that one. I like that one. My, my father always said, you don't need paper to start a fire, just get some birch, yeah. birch bark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that I've that got hurts. a couple of copies of that, I believe, but that That's one was really a nice. product I think I've of. Got yeah, that, I, but think, I think Dennis. My I think stuff, I, I think Brennan more. gave that to me, but um, and this one I don't know. I think that was a freebie too, somewhere along the line. But uh, meetings. I um I just stuck these three down just for the sake of talking about something for a minute. Awa has got tomorrow and the next couple of days. Um, she's doing a presentation, and I can't say who it's from, but it it obviously is on the work that that Awa is doing here. It's in Bartlett, but um, are they trying what? to encourage people up there or? <sighs> I don't know if they just happen to have it there. It could be there's problems up in there and they're trying to encourage. Um, well, I guess the Saco runs through there, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, it starts of, up in the yeah. notch. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They had something going on at the York County Soil and Water Conservation Place, but it, it was last weekend. Uh -huh. um, I can't remember now what it was. If I read it somewhere. I can't even remember where I read it. Yeah, I don't. I don't I'm not getting my Sanford news. Yeah. Until Monday. No. It comes mm. out on Thursday. I usually get it on Friday. And ever since the stupid election in the fall, I haven't been getting it until. And it's like, okay, the news is already old. Come on. <laughs> The, the, now it's getting decrepit. The the, I have never been to this one in Maine. They, they, there's a parallel to the water conference in New Hampshire, which is quite good. You know, there's a... One, one yeah, the, but that one's produced by New Hampshire Lake Associations, and that's good. But um, when is that? Are you talking about it. the saving special places? Or the... Well, I... 
that's up in April. That's that's way out in in April, but um, and that's costly, but it it's well worth doing. You know, if, if yeah, I've gone to it a couple of times, uh, you know, it, it's 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 a, a lot of teaching seminars. It's, it's but it's, uh, I think it's sixty dollars for you register now and seventy five at the door or something like that. But so it's expensive. But um, and I should have put the dates down. I just. I'm just saying that some of these things are worth doing. It's just mm -hmm. they're expensive, you know. Actually, I didn't put it down because I put it here. It's oh. April 11th at John Stark, and but it's so you can register by the third. But it, I they they have been good. I've gone to them a couple of times, and you put in you put in the conferences that you want, you know. But, um, and that's not, you know, where is the other side of Bosco going? It's up, it's up north, northwest of Concord. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, but did that whole concept, the whole concept of saving special places is, is, is pretty key to what conservation is about right now. You know, you know, if you make people realize it, if you don't save them, you lose them. But this is the way it's <coughs> getting to be in general. I mean, they're doing unless you go on the computer, there's no way to talk to them. There's no phone number. No. Maybe that meeting was about the um, the falls down by where the tavern the the tavern used to be on oh, Number One Pond. They're putting in a park. Oh yeah, they want to move yeah, the farmers market there at some point. They're building a park there. Um, for people to enjoy the falls and the and that that area isn't already of that isn't already part of the Muslim Way or no because that used to be that they used to have that restaurant and the and the bowling alley there okay. and I think that's all been torn down yeah. right yeah it's just okay so it's on that side of the road okay. yeah. yeah it's on that side it's, of it's in between new, Pleasant yeah. Street well I guess that's still that's still Pleasant Street it's right? just down below you got, the mall got the light or there now. Yeah. It's across from the mill, right across from the right. mill, yeah. old mill. And, and that might have been what it was about. I can't, I can't remember. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, they're getting a, I guess they're, they're getting a grant was, for that. Probably was a, there probably was a phone number, but I can get it if you're mm -hmm. really interested. You know, just There's a grant. Um, probably not. I think i got to be up there the sixth anyway. Uh-huh. There's a there's a scam no. going around concerning grants, um, where you get a phone call saying that you've won a grant, yeah. and uh, uh, I don't know exactly what uh, what this what they're they are saying that you've won the grant, but you have to send them a thousand dollars or speaking a certain of, monetary amount in order to collect the grant money. Speaking of grants, there's um, New Hampshire Charitable actually does give grants on this side of the river for oh. communities in certain ways uh, and uh, for education and for other things so that uh, you know the, 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 the you know that I'm, I'm more familiar with that as a granting process than in Maine but um, you know uh, I don't know if governments can fall but organizations can you know like the like the uh, historical society probably could because it's not a subset of government, but really? but any 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 five hundred one c three can you know Mary uh, Waterhouse yeah any five hundred one c three if if, if it's for education it could Mary you know they can, I don't she wanted to get our community to be one of those I think they're actually trying to promote some things across the river in order to yeah. it, we had it helps all them we needed was a, we needed to have a but, I think we needed to have a historical building but. It just it's not you know it didn't happen fast enough mm -hmm. or something but the uh, but she knows how to write grants and she she had all the information on that yeah. Um, yeah. I can't remember what type no. of a community it was but well, I have something to share see I brought it <laughs> can I read it sure. it's it's it isn't the whole book it's just one story in it Dr. Seuss had a birthday recently. This is called Yertle the Turtle. And this is one of those 
It's not. It is, but it isn't. Yertle the turtle. <laughs> On a faraway island of Salamasan, Yertle the turtle was king of the pond. A nice little pond. It was clean. It was neat. The water was warm. There was plenty to eat. The turtles had everything turtles might need. And they were all happy, quite happy indeed. They were until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see. But I don't see enough, that's the trouble with me. With this stone for a throne, I look down on my pond, but I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king, I'd be ruler of all I could see. There's Yertle, frowning. So Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand, and Yertle the Turtle King gave a command. He ordered nine turtles to swim to his stone, and using these turtles, he built a new throne. He made each turtle stand on another one's back, and he pulled them all up in the nine turtle stack. And then Yertle climbed up, and he sat on the pile. What a wonderful view. View He could see most a mile. And there he is with his stack of turtles. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't show you the other picture, did I? It's okay. Let me show it to the people. All mine, Yertle cried, all the things I now rule. I'm king of a cow, and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house, and what's more beyond that, I'm king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous mm -hmm. me, and I am the ruler of all that I, I see. <laughs> so he can see all these wonderful things, mm. see? And all through that morning he sat there up high, saying over and over, A great king am I. Until long about noon, then he heard a faint sigh. What's that? snapped the king, and he looked down the stack, and he saw at the bottom a turtle named Mac. Just a part of his throne, and this plain little turtle looked up and he said, Beg your pardon, King Yertle. I've pains in my back and my shoulders and knees. How long must we stand here, your majesty, please? <laughs> well, there's Max. He's on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Silence! The king of the turtles barked back. I'm king and you're only a turtle named Mac. You stay in your place while I sit here and rule. I'm king of a cow and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house and a bush and a cat. But that isn't all. I'll do better than that. My throne shall be higher. His royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles. I want about 200. <laughs> He's yelling. Talk about drawing. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed. And the turtles way down in the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came. They obeyed. From all over the pond they came swimming by dozens, whole families of turtles with uncles and cousins, and all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac. One after another, they climbed up the stack. And there they are, climbing up the stack. <laughs> then Yertle the turtle was perched up so high he could see 40 miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray, shouted Yertle, I'm king of the trees. I'm king of the birds and I'm king of the bees. I'm king of the butterflies, king of the air. Ah me, what a throne, what a wonderful chair. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. And there he is. He's real happy because now he's up really high mm. and he thinks he rules it all. Then again from below in the great heavy stack came a groan from that pain, plain little turtle named Mac. Your Majesty, please, I don't like to complain, but down here below we are feeling great pain. I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down at the bottom we too should have rights. We turtles can't stand it. Our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food. We are starving, groaned Mac. So there's Mac. He's down there at the bottom. He's really feeling the, the, the pain of all the turtles on top of him. You hush up your mouth, howled the mighty King Yertle. 
You've no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. I rule from the clouds, over land, over sea. There's nothing, no nothing, that's higher than me. There's the king bragging about his position. But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise up over his head in the darkening skies. What's that, snorted Yertle. Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? I shall not allow it. I'll go higher still. I'll build my throne higher. I can and I will. I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about 5,607. There he is. You Looking at the moon. Do you want to read the, the whole book? No, nope. she's about no, done. just the story. It's almost done. But as Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and started to order and give the command, that plain little turtle below on the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, decided he'd taken enough, and he had. And that plain little lad got a little bit mad, and that plain little Mac did a plain little thing. He burped, and his burp shook the throne of the king. So there's Mac burping. And Yertle the turtle king, the turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air, the birds and the bees, the king of a house and a cow and a mule. Well, that was the end of the turtle king's rule. For Yertle the king of all Salamisan fell off his high throne and fell plunk in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. And today, the great Yertle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud. That is all he can see. And the turtles, of course, all the turtles are free, as turtles and maybe all creatures should be. I think that's it. Yep. Then it goes on to another story. That's Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I wanted to share Yertle the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Is. Sorry, I know that took time. I'm sorry. Mm, well, that's all right. It was a pain in the butt, isn't it? <laughs> Not much. It, it really wasn't about conservation, but. <laughs> well, it is. is it? Yeah, okay. it is. It really is. Yeah, it just. What else you got? I guess that's about it. I am. Um, what do you want to do for next month? Well, we have Swarm. We have Swarm. We have you Dick, want it? Yeah. Dick Nass coming. We have to make, I have to make up flyers. I'll try to get them posted <coughs> in, in, in more places than just the, I'll try to get some, uh, I'll try to post something at the school, maybe, if they'll let me. And I'll try to post something at the foot the pond. And I'll try to put up a thing at the and Richard wants to see it before I post it so I'll make sure I show it to him mm -hmm. I can I can catch up with you guys maybe too and show it to you guys too mm -hmm. and get it you know it's it's just going to kind of be announcement that he's going to be doing a talk on swam and anyone interested in in small woodlot management may want to attend the conservation meeting and and give the date and time yeah it's right? a, I'll try to keep it. I'm not going to get all fancy. I'm just going to keep it black and white and and, and print it out. Mm -hmm. I can do that. And I'll, um, as far as the um, the posters, the poster contest. Do you do you want to try to do do that before the next meeting and get that established before the next meeting? You did say April vacation's yeah. coming up pretty quick. Yeah, it'll yeah. come up in April, obviously. It usually, it, it probably falls the week of our meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I probably ought to think about it then. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a big deal if it, if it, if we, if we get it done and, and, um, 
maybe have it available for when the kids come back from vacation but mm -hmm. I just thought it might be nice because where it's going to be spring they'll probably be outside doing yard work with their parents mm -hmm. things like that they'll, and they'll be Yancey to get outside because of the because it was so cold the, a lot of the kids didn't go sliding this year you know they didn't enjoy the snow the way they would have if it had been warmer out mm -hmm. so well, thank you for making the pitch for the extra cash. <laughs> yes. There's no harm in that. That was very nice of you, you know, to do that, Richard. Well, let's say it's long overdue. Yeah, well, we just have to be diligent about spending it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know? We we'll get it. got to get it. Yeah, we got to spend it. Get it spent. If we get it, it's got to get through town. It's got to get through the warrant process. Have you walked that parcel? I did go on a walk there for Spinneth. That's owned by Spinneth, you know, and it's 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 quite a good sized chunk, obviously, mm -hmm. after this flat ground road here. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's that's an it's a it's a nice thing to look. It's been cut over pretty hard a couple of times. Yeah. But it's it's and I I, I think I went in from here, and part way up. I didn't get up into this. But it's mm. it's a, it's a that on the salmon fall? Well, I don't, I don't know if, I've, I've never been down on this piece of the flat ground. You probably have, You're down the flat ground road, yeah. Um, are you familiar with, did the Society for Protection of New Hampshire Forest put this under easement on the other side? And uh, that's a nice parcel, you know. Um, it's just nice to walk, something that's under easement, you know, just to come, to, you know, see what's, I guess going I on there. Even realized that they had it. I mean, I Is looked that out off the Heath Road on the other side. So Jug Hill or Heath? Jug Hill. Jug Hill. Yeah. Mm. Jug, Jug mm. off the Jug Hill Road. Mm. But it, it, I, you know, I was glad when they did it, and you know, I as I said, I. Is there a sign or something that tells you? There's a sign up by on the Berry Road. Okay. You know where the oh, Berry okay. Cemetery is. I There's think a sign I've up seen there. That. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. It, it connects on there, and then two thirds way down the Jug, Jug Hill Road, it goes in. In, in there too, so it's a long stretch. Okay, you know, I've so seen that on the Barry three Road. Three quarters of a mile or a mile of that, and yeah. you know, um, we just need to do more of that. We just need to get out there and take a look at, and I've said this before, whether it's Oars Falls, Oars Falls, or you need, we need to just spend some time looking at what other people are doing on parcels that are under easement. Not that we're there, it's just, we ought to think that way, mm -hmm. you know? It uh, well, gives, gives you the idea of what can be done with a large parcel. I know that, um, I know, uh, would it be conducive for us to invite the land trust to come and talk to us about what's going on at Hobbs Farm, or do we need to talk to the people? To, to other people? Because I don't, I still don't understand. I do understand. I understand why it probably isn't being done, but I don't understand why, if it's part of the land trust, why they aren't asking well, that it be done to save the habitat for songbirds, right? Well, Song, so that, that, was, that was my point. I don't, under, I don't, I don't understand why they took the that piece of stone wall out of there because that's good for small habitat. Well, and the uh, reason they gave was invasives. Was it because of invasives? That well, that's why they said they were going to take it out. I said I wouldn't take that wall out. No, we, oh no. no, it harbors invasive species. I think they aren't going to get rid of the sense. invasive it, it species because they're right. all over the ridge. I know you're losing <laughs> a, you're losing a piece of history and you're losing a piece of wild you know wildlife. And what did you, what did they do with the rocks that came out of it? Where where did they lug them? What what? Because yeah, rocks have value, especially if they were in a stone wall. Okay, so you think they took them off off site? I don't think so. I think they probably just put them that, down. Yeah. On the wall. So, no, no. so what type of compression did they, what type uh, of... With the machinery that they... To, to, to take the rocks out with. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry. It just... There is... I grew up listening to meadow larks and bobolinks and your sister's lot, your lot. Whippoorwills. I haven't heard got a whippoorwill in... You know, and you know, yeah. I heard one a couple of years ago, and I just stopped dead in my tracks because it was like, wow, wow. I used to have, we used to hear whippoorwills all the time. Yeah, no, and I you know. just don't no. hear them no. anymore. No, no, it just, it, there's, there's oh, so yeah. much habitat that's gone. You too, know. Many, too many fields growing back. 
I've actually never heard them in act, and I just, the only place I've ever heard them is our Adam's Point. We used to have them out and back, out by the Beaver Pond. Yeah, we, you could hear yeah, them we used to have them in the woods, I used to have them in, back I used to have them in the, the I've, I've, I've heard Rip Wills probably within the last five years, but <laughs> probably not within the last five years, but prior yeah. to that, you know. But um, for a while there were bobolinks coming to the big field, to the, the Yumo, the one near me. Okay. You know. Yeah. yeah. I see, we see, we, well, I got to see a, a mother deer and her fawn last year when mm -hmm. I was, I was um, uh, raking and uh, she come out of the woods with her fawn and just as, just as pretty as can be, just as beautiful and graceful and that little fawn was just as spotted as you could get. <laughs> like you come out of the woods and then, and walked right across the hay field and went right up the roadway, <laughs> headed towards, uh, Towards your house, <laughs> and and uh, it was just really something. I can I can remember my father showing me a fawn in the woods when I was a little girl. He no, says just I went out there to get him for supper or something or dinner, and I was little. I would I know I was by myself, so my well. It's just that you know if you get different people, if you get different groups with different perspectives at the table, you you'll end up doing a better job at conservation. Well, I just think no. it might be help, it might be nice to invite them to t to talk about what they do at yeah. our conservation yeah. meeting. Yeah, okay. And um, because that's what they're supposed to be in the business of doing, right? Is conserving. And and they do. I'm I'm glad I'm glad they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, but I and Easement is, is, is a hard tool for a lot of people to walk into. Once you get used to it, you know, you know, yeah. it's hard for conservation. It would be hard for us to do, you know, without the expertise that the three, that the three rivers and other land trust have. Right. And um, I think because the land trust do it so well that a lot of the conservation commi committees in the state yeah. have broken down because I think my biggest problem that I had with the land trust was it occurred back when the whole Mary Grant property had to be taken over by the town because this is a woman who left in her who left in her will that she wanted her land her land in a land trust and basically they told us at the town meeting that if the town didn't didn't offer to take this over. The lawyer that stood up and talked about it said, if if the town doesn't take the Mary Grant property and put it in a different land trust, that they were going to sell it for for as high a price as they could get it. And it wouldn't, because the land yeah. trust mm -hmm. that had it was not going to cover it. And it was like, so what was the purpose of the will? Because her will wasn't going to be honored if we had voted that down you know, you know, and, and it's like, okay, so that piece of paper meant nothing. And she probably didn't know that when she filled it all out and did it. And I just found that very, I was, it, it made me have a very negative look at the whole land trust formula oh, yeah. in a legal sense because of that, because of the way it was presented to the town. And and uh, I, because I didn't have a problem with the land trust, with it being in a land trust. I just didn't understand why the town of Acton had to take it over, why it couldn't stay in a land trust, why another land trust couldn't have just taken it over. I, I just could not understand that. Yeah. And it, I it, guess it very, maybe very, I'll never it, be able to very, very simple. understand. Okay. It. Listen, yeah, I'm Main listening. Coast Heritage Trust, which is up, and they deal with great big parcels. Right, and this is only a thirteen-acre parcel, and they really weren't interested in the, in in the small piece. In but but it. why did well, they wait, take wait. her to begin well, with well, then? Well, wait, wait. So then they turned around and approached Three Rivers Land Trust. It was discussed, and then somebody men mentioned about talking to the selectman. They talked to the selectman at a workshop or whatever, and the selectmen were agreeable to put it on the town warrant to, for the town to accept it. Yeah. That's what they did. Yeah. Okay, but why didn't the Three Rivers Land Trust just accept it? Was there a monetary fee that was involved? Well, I, say, I can't remember. Yeah. That was too long ago. 
the uh, well, things have changed over the years and everything. But uh, you know, land trusts were uh, susceptible to have to pay taxes if they owned it. If they just had the the uh, easement, then they all they had to do was just monitor the easement and make sure it wasn't being violated. Okay. <laughs> but. Uh, but it was you know, nothing was pushed or whatnot. But they own the Hobbs's farm. They yeah, don't have to pay taxes on that. Yeah. Or do they? They do. They do. Okay. Are they know? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm, I'm they just don't, like they don't have to. Now, because somebody went to court, and uh, some judge turned around and declared that uh, the uh, land trust trusts were exempt from property taxes. And when I questioned the town, I was told by the tax assessor that they had not approached them and request to be exempt from taxes. So, so they pay on taxes on the Hobbs, Hobbs farm. Okay. Okay. No, uh, it, 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 it's a complicated issue. You, know, you can, I, you know, I can see positive sides of having joint ownership between town and land trust on a parcel, particularly well, if the parcel, that, particularly if the parcel has plays a critical interest into town services. You know, say you had a, say you had a parcel that was next to a town well. I, I could definitely see positives of having the town have an invested interest mm -hmm. along with the land trust. Um, just between my own personal fears is um, down the line, say a hundred years from now, what's the standard? What, what's the standing of a land trust? If if the if it's a land trust, if a parcels are owned, if all the parcels on a land trust were owned in, in part by the, by a town, you know, you know, say a land trust had properties in seven or eight towns. I see legally that that's probably a stronger stand, standpoint for protecting the land down the line than just if it was all under one land trust. Right. Because they are, they're, they're an institution, but they, they, still a finan they, they still have a financial, they still have to have financial capacity to, right. to, to see what they're doing. Okay. And you know, my concern with land trust personally is, is the stewardship models that they're going to have in the long run to to govern the properties they have. Right. You know, it's if I own property that's substantial, I want to have a plan for what I'm going to do with it. And land trust should have the same thing, you know. They should have a long-term stewardship goals and long-term acquisition goals. Yeah. You know, because you can have a lot of property and not be doing right by it, you know. And which goes back to your questions of the bottle rings. <laughs> you, know, you know, as I mentioned before, that right. I, I think that Hobbs's property is, is, is got a lot of good attributes to it. What, what is um, what is uh, what is the town, or, or should I say, what is uh, I, I say, what is the town of Acton? But what is the town of Acton? What is the sports? What did they call it? The, the, what is it? The sport? The rec? The rec, town rec, yeah. rec, rec committee. Yeah. What are they going to do with the the land, the rest of the land that's attached to their property? That that the town's property where the sports fields are. What's going to happen to well, that we, parcel of land? That might be a good walk for us. We could we, walk we over bounce that. that. I have walked it. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know I, that I, you've I, walked it. That I never walked it. I yeah, know that yeah, you walked it at, yeah, before yeah. it was purchased. We, 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 did, we discussed public access points along that, and it's a, it's a tough parcel to get parking on, other than the fact that the wreck <laughs> has claim on the best spots to park. Um, but like the Mary Grant, that, 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 that has a public capacity. You know, you could make use of that. It's a little more well, fragile the, because it's the, the not quite. All, the gate is always locked unless they're having a game. And I find that uh, I really, I, under, I can understand it, but at the other t time, it's like, I'm sorry, if somebody, if somebody has a, a family reunion, and they say, "Hey, let's all go down to the ball field and play a, a game, a game of baseball." And they all pile into their cars. They can't get in, yeah. and they live in the town of Acton. They should be able to use that field as long as nobody else is using it. Well, 
we need to contact the chairman of the rec committee and oh yeah at the spur of the moment you're well, going to contact the, the 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 chairman of the rec committee i know how that would work for me you yeah, wouldn't be able to get them yeah but the i think the main point here is that the reason that they gate it off and lock it is because kids will go in there with cars or trucks yeah, and tear, tear, tear the yeah. ball fields all up yep. just doing curlicues all around you know vandalism yep. yeah but no it's too bad but that's the way it happens and then all of a sudden you incur a lot of expenses to turn around and make the repairs to the fields but well, we certainly can visit that issue Another meeting, well, I wouldn't you know, mind it, it, doing it, a site walk on that, you know, just, just walking it, 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 it think to see what it was, because I, I never had the time to walk it at the, before it was purchased. It's, 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 but yeah. I, um, yeah. it's a nice, nice parcel, you know. Yeah, well, some, say, what, was it 29 acres? Either 25 or 29 25, acres? 25, I think. I think it was 25. Then the rec committee only uses five. Yeah, so I think it's about 20. Yeah. 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 I yeah. could never understand why they didn't want to spend the extra money to buy the field. That's well, that, it was. I, and I'm we, not. We, what do you mean up here? Yeah, the one that, yeah. the one where, um, yeah. between Smiths and and uh, the uh, where the Dormans live, used to live. Oh, I thought they were looking at the one, the other side of the post office. No, they were looking at the one. It's where they they built that house. Yeah. Okay. Jerry Gallant lived on one end yeah. of the field, and then the dormants and, and and that's a huge field. It's uh -huh. a huge field, and they it was more expensive, and they decided this piece was better, and there was a lot of people that didn't want them to buy. It wasn't because they didn't. The, it isn't a good parcel to have, but for a rec field. That's already a field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to cut any trees. You didn't have to. Yeah, All you had to do yeah. was make it into a sports field. Yes, it was still would have been work. You would have had a lot. You would have been able to make a lot bigger parking area. You would have been able to, you know, it, it just would have been, you would have been able to make some nice fields in there. And you wouldn't have had to worry about wetland. You wouldn't have had to do any fill. I, well, I'm, I, I shouldn't say any, but you, you probably wouldn't have had to do any, very much, Phil. And instead it got bought, and of course then, then uh, oh, I, I can't think of their name. His wife died. She was... Uh, yeah, young. Isabel? No, not Isabel. You're, you're talking... No, I'm talking about the people that built the house in the field after they bought oh, it. Yeah. Um, Bud, he's still at Trafton. Yes. Bud Trafton. Yeah, Roy Trafton. Yeah, I had to think of her name. She... she she was Connie, I think. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, yeah, she passed away. I know that. But they were members of the Historical Society. Yeah. And, uh, stuff. But we done? So, okay. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> End of meeting.